Milos, nicknamed the Island of Colors. Its landscape filled with rich volcanic minerals paints the cliff sides white, pink, and orange. You almost can't believe what you're seeing as the dreamlike coastline contrasts with the crystal clear turquoise waters. And if you've ever dreamed of what Greek town should resemble, look no further than the charming capital Plaka. Once a sanctuary where pirates used to hide out in caves, now a place where Justin Bieber casually hides out on vacation. It's been voted the greatest island in Europe and made the top 10 list of world's best islands. Some say it's even more unique unique than its neighbors, Mykonos and Santorini, and all of this without the crazy crowds. So let's raise our glasses and yamas to the newest game-changing island in Greece. We are five weeks into our three-month trip around Europe. We spent a lot of that time in Turkey so far, and then we made our way to Greece just recently. We were in Santorini. If you missed those videos, click up here. Milos was a quick ferry ride from Santorini, only 18 euros, and the ride was very luxurious. I definitely recommend taking ferries here. Sadly, we don't have a ton of time here in Milos. I wish I would have booked a little bit longer, but at the same time, it's been super expensive this summer in Greece and we've made a ton of mistakes that have hurt our wallet. So in this video, we're also gonna share with you not only amazing things to do here in Milos, but some tips on how to maybe not make the mistakes that we have. Also, please excuse my appearance. I just sometimes really don't feel like putting on makeup, especially when I'm about to swim all day. Girls, comment down below if you know how I feel because being a YouTuber, there's some pressure to put makeup on. I'm just not about it all the time. We have to have the cutest car on the entire island. Sadly, it was the last automatic, so it comes with a hefty price tag of $82 a day. I guess what makes up for it is going to the best beach on Milos called Firi Plaka. Anna and I walked down probably 10 seconds from the car, found this private little area. It's not a beach, but there's enough spot to put our stuff and go swimming right in this crazy blue clear water. Over there is the beach and they have places to sit and swim, but Anna and I like our privacy over here. This is one of the beaches that you would definitely want to come to and have yourself a day, lay out, grab some food, whatever. Highly recommend getting a travel size snorkel set. Oh shoot, the beach, gosh. Dang. We've been using this for the past three years around the world and it has never let us down. It's so nice not having to pay rental fees and be able to go in just like this anywhere you want. There will be a link down in the description below for these. We get a little bit of kickback on Amazon, but other than that, we hope you enjoy them. Wait. Although the prices are a lot in July, the weather and the water temperature is perfect. I could swim in here all day and jump off this cliff. There's only three places in the world I've ever seen water like this shade of blue. The first is Exuma Bahamas. The second was the Komodo Islands in Indonesia. This is the third, like some of the prettiest water I've ever seen. Greece, you are killing it. We'll be talking about you for a while, Milo. <laughs> Now we just drove one minute down the street to Sigrado Beach and it's a little cove on real water just like the last one and you have to climb down on a ladder and a rope to get down there. Should be quite the adventure. You can see people climbing the ladder. Definitely a chill spot just to hang out, relax on the beach, maybe read a book. Not huge at all. Anna's starting the journey down. There's two ladders, there's one up top here and then a narrow cavern you go down and then the second ladder's down there. Here you go, Anne. Thank you. <laughs> I will think shoes, sandals, bare feet is gonna help you here. So just come with whatever you have on and slowly make your way down. It's really cool. It's amazing that someone just decided this was a great idea. You got this in? Yeah. You're almost halfway. The latter part is super easy, so don't be scared to come down here. It's very chill, especially later in the day. There's some shade to hang out in. Not very mobile, definitely don't do that, but for anyone our age, easy peasy lemon squeezy. We were just talking about how Anna has our boating license in the US and how we should rent a boat out over here. I looked online, if we head to Zaginthos later on in this trip, you can get like a boat for 120 euro, which is not bad, especially because you get to go at your own pace. Anna 
Nicola's gonna be driving tonight. I'm enjoying our wine that we bought back in Santorini. Only two euro. Best price in the whole world. Best price. Ian sucks do 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 do. Ian sucks do 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 do. Ian's hot do 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 do. Ian's hot. We had a great time at this beach. I think because people are kind of saying that it's not worth it, there seems to be a lot less people here than we thought. But I will say if you're coming here to swim, don't have too high of expectations because the water isn't that clear. There's a lot of debris, not like garbage, just debris in it. So I'll let you guys know that. Um, but I would say, yeah, come. I do like the other beach better though. Sun's going down and we're gonna go pick up some food at the supermarket because we've been eating out too much and every meal is around 20 to 30 euro for two people, of course. And we're gonna go get some ramen, fruit and veggies, and maybe some yogurt. Try to keep it as low priced as possible. Yes! Ian told you guys that we are not gonna go out to eat today and save a little bit of money. So I'm on the hunt for a few things. Ramen, fruits and vegetables, and feta. That's pretty much it. That's what our diet is gonna consist of because those are things we can make in our Airbnb. So let's do it. frolicking around Plaka, which is the capital city of Milos and has like these whitewash buildings that Santorini had that you'll see all over Greece. Great views, great vibes, good times, and that's it. <laughs> it's been a couple hours now and I've had this black mark on my forehead Anna just told me about. She was like, Ian, I didn't tell you because I thought it was hot. What is going on in my life? Why do I have to live this life? You gotta think about this. I have her for life. Well, I just thought it was like, oh, you were working like so hard. There's, like, you know when you used to mulch and you were all dirty? You look dirty and I just thought it was really attractive. Really freaking cute here. Ian and I keep talking about like, oh my god, this is so much better than Santorini. I still think people should go to Santorini, but to come here and see this, and there's just not a lot of crowds. Like, it's very empty, very walkable, and it's so cute. <laughs> By far the best place you can catch sunset, and I highly recommend it because the architecture, the whitewashed buildings, it's just too much. We love you, Greece. <laughs> we had some troubles finding a car here and we were actually like roaming the streets because we're about four kilos from the town where you would rent a car and uh, right across the street there's this older couple and they were just sitting out they asked us if we needed help they basically went and got us the car because they could speak Greek and they drove us down there they were just so sweet and then tonight we needed a wine opener so they're like our little helpers and this right here is what I came back with not only a new bottle of Milos wine but a melon and they it's brought us traditional cheese pie too. It's homemade and filled with cheese strictly from Milos. Their neighbor makes the cheese. The hospitality, they are so nice. We're gonna introduce you to them tomorrow, maybe before or after dinner. Anna made us some ramen. We got tomatoes, cucumbers, feta, mm. our wine. I love meeting people in the areas cause that's like what makes the experience so much more fun. Good morning to another day on Milos. It's 6.05 a.m. in the morning and we woke up to head to Serakiniko, which is a famous spot on the island and also a very picturesque spot too because it's a moon-like landscape right on the sea. Right now I'm already seeing it, it's otherworldly. We keep getting up so early for all these destinations ever since Cappadocia because we had to get up for these hot air balloon rides and we're starting to die a little inside. I think Anna's delusional this morning. We get up for pictures because the lighting is better. We just can't decide. Every morning we're like, oh, oh, oh I don't want to get up. These are the moments you gotta push through. But you also pay for a place to sleep. You don't even sleep there. So I don't even know where we should be sleeping in our car. Because up top there is camper vans. And that's what we did in the US. We didn't even think of it here. Maybe you could rent a camper van. Let's live in Europe and ship the Woo Woo Mobile to Europe. And then we can camp around Europe. We have just landed on the moon. And of course it's always worth it when you get up this morning. Because there is no one here. Here, there's one guy over there, and I'm guessing this is where we'll be jumping later. Pretty high, but the oh my god. 
gosh. The water is a magical blue. You got caves and this moon rock. I'm really glad that we did come in the morning because it was nice seeing it for sunrise and having it kind of to ourselves. I'm also definitely excited to come later because I think uh, it's just going to be a different vibe midday, a little bit whiter, the water is going to be bluer, and then also we can cliff jump. We're not doing much between now and the afternoon. We're going to return our car, get a new one, and we will see you back here in a few hours. Woo! Welcome back to Sarah Kaniko. Long time no see. There's totally a lot more people here than there was this morning. Everyone's jumping off rocks. It's so much fun here. You can jump off any height you want there's like a particular area that everyone's jumping off of but we found our own little spot you can really just pick anywhere to jump swim do whatever some girls over there have their out I guess it's now a topless beach so that's exciting seeing all these boats and yachts people are coming in on little dinghies and it's just a perfect way to spend the day it's about 95 degrees Fahrenheit out here and there's really no sand remember to bring some snacks water lots of water we bought some booze too and then also maybe some towels to hide under from the Sun because we are definitely burning a little bit we're heading over to the woot woot rock where we're jumping from it's about 30 feet in the air and right over this edge this is where we're jumping it is a long way down. Where we are, there's actually quite a bit of trash. I see a lot of plastic and some fishing nets. So I want to take this opportunity to promote Sea Spiracy. It's on Netflix and it's an amazing documentary that will change your life. Save our oceans, save the planet, save the world. We aren't perfect, but we do try our best. So if you see some trash when you're swimming or out on a hike, just pick it up and throw it away. Little things add up to big differences. Anna's swimming back right now, so I want to give you a traveler's tip on Greece and probably most of the European Union. If you're coming here and want to rent a moped or ATV, which are both cheaper options than cars, you're gonna need an international driving license. We didn't get that set up, so we learned the hard way. I heard it's a really easy process back in America, so you might want to figure that out before heading over here. As we're heading to our next cliff jump spot on the other side, I wanna ask you guys, what do you like to do when you're vacationing or traveling? Do you like to go cliff jumping, swimming, maybe on tours, or just go party with some friends? Let us know down in the comments because I feel like I wanna to get to know you guys better. Only if you're subscribed, of course. We found a cave where we're relaxing right now, reapplying sunscreen. And some shade. Yeah, this is a nice spot. There's caves all over here. Now we are over by where the rest of the people are cliff jumping, and there's a reason people come over here. There's this hole and cave you swim through after you cliff jump, and there's all sorts of different heights you can jump from too. This is definitely an easier cliff jump area, but you sacrifice comfort for people because there are tons of people here. Gosh, that was such a fun day. I think we spent like four or five hours cliff jumping. We came home, watched some shows, ate our dinner, and passed out. Now it's about 10 o'clock, but we really need to go say goodbye to our neighbors because we're gonna miss them so much. This is Katie <laughs> and her husband over here. They have treated us very nicely our whole time here. <laughs> Drinking Rocky, which is a traditional Greek drink. It is schnapps, and I heard it's quite strong. Mm -hmm. I thought we tried it, no? Oh my god. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> was I supposed to sip it? I don't know how people do that. I don't think I was supposed to drink it that fast. Oh my god, my heart's burning. Rocky, you're treating me pretty crazy right now. Very sad to be leaving Milos. We only spent two and a half days here and I suggest spending five to six days to really enjoy the island to the fullest. Some things we missed out on was a boat tour around the islands to parts where you can't get to by car or foot. The two must-dos that we did in this video are Firi Plaka Beach and then Sarah Kiniko where we're cliff jumping today. 